All right, if you want your Tyco US1 trucks to run quickly, um, if you followed my track cleaning tips, the next step is gonna be to get the trucks straightened out, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'll put some links in the bottom in the comments, but um, you're gonna need a few things, um, some liquid bearings, some super lube, a little flathead, a little Phillips, some P220 sandpaper, paper towel, alcohol. Um, and I like to use Q-tips also for the cleaning inside. Now, just a disclaimer, this is, you know, that just happens to be the way I do it. This doesn't necessarily mean it's the best way. Um, first thing you're going to want to do is slide these tires off. They come right off. Um, if you've not already bought some, check out our website for links to purchase these um, silicone tires for replacements. The original ones for the 80s are not going to work properly, more than likely. And then one of these sides should come off easily. Um, and one thing that you'll notice right away, and this one's actually been cleaned recently, is there's already quite a bit of um, fluff built up in there that, that that's going to need to be removed. One other thing I did forget is you will need some, some tweezers um, during all this um, as well, so make sure you have some tweezers on hand. So after I've removed the, the, uh, that one tire, you can, you can get that off. And if this other side comes off, you might as well take it off too. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of gunk. I'm in there as, as well. I'm going to remove that. And then most of you probably already know how to take these off. Um, just they're pretty, pretty easy to, to pull out. Um, and they're just tabs that hold those in, in place. And then it, you know, pops right off. You can see, um, this is the, the tab right there on each side. So once you have that off, each truck's different, but this is, um, this back plate here on these serves as the weight. And um, it has a tab. Um, let's see if I can get this on here. It's a little dirty. This is the tab right here. So you need to get your Phillips um, I usually take a finger pushing up and then wedge this in at the same time to get the weight out. And then you see that popped right out. Now you do have to be careful, but I will tell you that these um, chassis are pretty forgiving. Now once you have that off, you can get to the worm gear. And as you can see, it is quite dirty. And this is after um, it's been cleaned. Um, quite a bit and that that's when I just take the q-tip and start to clean the inside uh, out as much as I can to begin with you can see it's already getting quite a bit of gunk out there and I just slide under there twist turn A lot of times you'll get excess oil from somebody that's previously oiled it or just dirt and grime. Um, and as you can see, that's quite a bit of dirt there. Now, it's hard to tell, but there's actually stuff down in here also. And that's when I like to use the, the tweezers to get that out. See, if you look with a high definition camera, you can really see all that fluff that's built up down in there. So you want to get that out um, as much of the bulk stuff as possible. And you, and you can see um, like there's some right there um, as well that I just pulled off. And what's crazy is this one's been cleaned already. This is not like it's been sitting in storage since the 80s. All right, I'm going to show you another tip. If you have a hobby knife, it'll actually fit in these grooves of the worm gear. And I like to gently put it down in the 
there and just rotate the engine. And what it'll do is break up any more of the gunk um, that's in there. Now these worm gears also crack, especially if they're the white ones. The brown ones don't seem to do it. Um, but um, if those are cracked, which this one actually does have a crack in it. Let's see if I can, and you can actually see where I was able to get some more fluff out of the gear. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. So that's, that's you know, what you're dealing with. And then I guess I should have also said, you do need some compressed air um, also, which sadly, it's gotten very expensive. Costco sells four cans if you, you know, use it a lot. They've started to put some, it says on the label, they put some kind of bitter stuff in it to keep people from misusing it. But anyway, get ready for sticker shock if you've not bought that in a while. Next step is going to be to write on the tip of the engine motor right there. You're just going to take a little bit of this, this liquid um, bearings. I'm going to clean the tip off to make sure I don't have any excess on it. And just get about just a little bitty drop on there. So that actually went on there. And then I like to just work the engine a little bit with it upright because it's going to go kind of work its way down in there. And then just take um, your Q-tip around this area, I'm sorry, and clean as well. And then also get any excess oil that was when we just oiled it. Did the same thing for the um, other side. Um, you're going to oil the other side of the motor as well. Let's see if I can show you on the video to do how to do that. Just right down in there. And then just work that in too. After you've applied it, and then just use your, your Q-tip to get any excess out. I'll show you what to do with the pickup shoes next. Okay, actually I lied. We're going to take off these back, this back wheel next. And actually it's got a little bit of fluff on it so just pull that off on this one side first and then this just slides out the whole gear clean this off real good and you can put a little bit of um, oil on the um, liquid bearings on it too just I mean just a little bit and then when you have this out just clean it really good on this on the outsides with the q-tip and then we'll go to the um, underside here, there's just obviously two screws and I'm going to show you a tip how to get these. This is actually a problem a lot of times that people have is, is the, the pickup shoes, the way they're bent. And um, also you can just take some of this P220 sandpaper and um, get, get it back into uh, to where it's got good contact. On it. Uh, by the way, this Batman mat, my sister Lisa got it for me. I love it. And as you can see, I can see all the uh, materials I'm taking off. This is where I'm going to take my paper towel and get off any excess stuff off the bottom of the chassis. Okay, now um, what I do. I'm gonna to have to line it up, line it up here first. This is gonna be a little bit more difficult to show you, demonstrate with, with only one hand. So as you can see, I kind of lined it on the, the edge of my desk there. And then I'm going to take my sandpaper um, and then sand it down. And when you have it out, um, one thing that I've found is useful is just to try to get these bent a little bit more evenly 
and this is just a technique you have to practice on your own. When you put them back on, they don't have to be bent already because the the way it's made, it's going to push them out to where they bow to make contact. So try to get them straightened up somewhat, and then just you can clean these with some uh, sandpaper and some uh, alcohol and get them get them good good and cleaned up. And I'll show you one more thing after this. This is how I'm going to clean the, the pickup shoes, and then I'm just going to flip it around to this side. And as you can see, look at that. It's like brand new. Um, and then just, if you want to, take your Q-tip and clean it off. All right, now we're ready to put our weight on. I usually just like to take a Q-tip and clean it up just a little bit. Actually, it's got oil and dirt down in there. So that's a good thing I cleaned that off. Just clean it up a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then just like we talked about earlier, these have, this will give you a good look um, and get it focused. There's a tab right there. That's what's going to go down in. This covers the um, worm gear. So just get it lined up with the side there. And if you have any um, excess oil from anything on here, just get that off first. Um, just take it with two fingers and press it, and it'll pop right down in there. Um, and you'll hear it click. And then once you have that um, taken care of, you're going to take your tires. And by the way, I, I skipped this step, but if you have purchased um, the ones that are on our uh, link on our website, Tyco, uh, us1trucking.com, they have the shiny side on the inside. Um, you can clean these with Dawn. Um, they clean up really good because they're silicone. So don't put the tire on all the way or the and the wheel is part of the way and then I like to just take two fingers at the same time and you can just kind of tell when they've uh, reached in place and then um, like we talked about before these have the, the clips on the sides that line up just line that up and that's going to go right on there and then we'll go test all right them. so this is a legit um, clean run like I just took it right off the bench there and we're going to see what happens after that technique you can see it looks really good. And look at that. I mean, one try. So that you can see that a lot of the trucks don't run good and it's just because they need a good cleaning like that. And then, you know, your track does have to be um, clean too. And then some of these rails have to be pushed, pushed through to make contact, but, um, I've got another video on how to do that, but if you're frustrated because your track's not running properly, then if you follow the videos that we have on YouTube, on Tyco, us1tracking.com, you can definitely get your track running back like it was 1982 again. All right. If you found this helpful, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe for more uh, various hobby acting and different videos that I'll post uh, and computers.